loss of both her parents at a young age, being the youngest and only girl in her family, and having only a grandmother to take care of her, Muriel Green knew about hard work and dedication from a young age. She attended Nelson Street Girls Primary School, and after having missed an opportunity at writing the college exhibition exam, which would have allowed her to go on to secondary school, Miss Green took the teacher's certificate exam instead at age 14 and was successful. When she was 14 going on 15, she started teaching at the infant department of Nelson Street Girls Primary School and supplemented her income by giving private lessons to students. She completed her teacher pupil exams and then went on to become a teacher at the Belmont Orphanage where her interest in social guidance started. She also became a visiting lecturer at the Catholic Women's Training College and continued giving private lessons as well. Altogether, she worked as a teacher from 1941 to 1969 and lectured part-time between 1948 and 1970. Miss Green initially got her feet into politics in 1956 whilst working with Sir John Donaldson, her former music teacher, on the 1956 government elections. At the time, however, she wasn't a party member. Four years later, she received a circular inviting her to a meeting of the first National Arts and Crafts Committee that was being formed. After this, she was invited to attend their Education Committee meetings. It was only after attending these meetings that Miss Green joined the PNM as a member. At the beginning of the 1960s, she joined the PNM's Women's League, an organization which proved to be pivotal in keeping the People's National Movement, the PNM, in power for 30 consecutive years. The PNM Women's League in that period was a power behind the party. Um, Dr. Williams had recognized early o'clock at the formation of the PNM. Um, given his influence with Ghana and with Jamaica, those two people, those were the people that influenced him setting up specifically this Women's League because he had seen the women of Ghana, the Higglers of, of, of Ghana doing their thing and running the place. And he knew very well what a lot of men knew but wouldn't accept, you know, wouldn't openly accept, that it was the women that were running the households, it was the women that basically did what had to be done. And he saw it as a force that would be difficult to do. And I, I'll never forget my first sight of a women's league conference. When you went to this hall and there were hundreds of women in their whites, and when something happened and they either cheered or booed, Lord, you knew you were in place, you know. In 1964, she obtained a UNESCO scholarship to Hillcroft College in England, where she did psychology and political theory, and then went on to Reading University to complete a master's degree in education. After returning to Trinidad, she went back to the Belmont Orphanage, where she stayed for three years, until she got called to a government-appointed tripartite committee for training and went to work at the Ministry of Education and Culture. Here, she was able to hone her skills and experience as guidance supervisor and head of the guidance unit. During 1968 to 1970, she was a member of the National Housing Authority and during 1972 to 1976, a member of the Advisory Council for Community Development and was also a member of the Commission on the Status of Women. During 1976 to 1981, she was appointed as chairperson of the PNM's Women's League, as well as Lady Vice Chairman of the PNM. She later went on to serve as a senator and minister in the Ministry of Information during the George Chambers PNM administration from 1981 to 1986. What I thought was, was, was more important was what she did with the Ministry of Information because she brought in a cadre of young women um, who were trained. A lot of them 
qualified um, and and help break the barriers that were existing in, in all those industries, you know. Um, so that a lot of them, I, I remember, for example, Paula Morgan, that was the name I was trying to remember. Um, who is at UV now? Well, I, I don't know her, her real po her, you know, exact post. But I met her and a lot of other younger women, and they were younger than I was. I was considered a, a young woman in those days, um, um, who got opportunities and, and, and they set up the information division, as it were, the information ministry, to get the information out without it being propaganda. And, and, and that was critical for her. She didn't want propaganda out there. She wanted information to go to people and also bring in information so that, you know, when you took decisions, you, you're pretty clear on what you were doing. Under his stewardship, the ministry established its own television studio in St. Clair and produced a number of government information programs in an attempt at public outreach and partnering more with the media. We had brought some legislation to the parliament to um, recognize children born out of, red, of Ledlock as being children of the parents um, and, and remove the stigma of legitimacy and illegitimacy and she was behind that and um, she part of that if I remember correctly um, <clears throat> was the, the clause which said that a man a husband could rape his wife and the wife had recourse um, it also um, recognized common law unions after a period then that there was legitimacy to it. Um, the, the common law spouse could um, get um, the benefits as though they were married. Um, and those, I think, were the things that were most important, the most important pieces of legislation. She was very quietly um, behind. At the close of the PNM's 23rd annual convention, Muriel Green was appointed as the PNM's first female deputy leader in charge of policy matters. In 1986, when the PNM celebrated 30 years of unbroken political power, Ms. Green delivered the history of the PNM party. Mr. Chambers was following the footsteps of Dr. Williams, who saw that these women, because um, you remember the education system was designed the new education system designed to bring these women forward and they were now taking um, the, the, the results of that program brought all these younger women up to the forefront as professionals, as professionals. and um, Dr. Williams was looking for professionals which was one of the reasons why I came into politics. He was basically sending people out to look for professionals to come and do the work. After a long illness, she passed away at the age of 67. She never married or had any children, but left her legacy in the multifaceted contributions that she made to local politics. Her funeral took place on August 13th, 1993 at the St. John's R.C. Church in Diego Martin and was attended by many government officials and dignitaries of the time. She brought to the political arena um, an insight and a quiet and, and worked for the quiet quietly for the recognition of women. Um, and I think she did that well. She exerted a lot of influence very quietly. Throughout her career, Miss Green kept a very low profile, albeit being a loyal supporter of the PNM and displaying unrelenting dedication to her community. She has once been quoted as saying, I take my politics seriously because I take the country and the development of my country seriously. Thank you.